America is always better off when the two political parties are clearly defined and provide a distinct choice for voters. One party rule is synonymous with dictatorship, while competition defines democracy. But in the wake of bitter defeat in the elections last November that pulled this nation further to the left, Republicans have suffered from ideological confusion. What to do? Embrace some of the tenets of the opposition in an effort to win over more voters? or hold fast to the conservative principles that distinguish their party from the Democrats. Put another way, the question is whether your loyalty is to party or policy. High drama surrounding an explosively controversial transportation bill in Virginia recently framed this question almost perfectly. With an infrastructure that needs repair and expansion, Republican Governor Bob McDonnell broke with conservatives and advocated for a bill that raises several state taxes. More than half of his fellow Republicans in the legislature voted against it, and the governor was forced to rely on heavy support from Democrats to get the bill passed. Truth is, when it comes to party and policy, you can't have one without the other. No matter how just the cause, if the vehicle for actually turning that cause into reality is weak or flawed, the bottom line will be failure. It becomes the ultimate negative sum game. That's why the establishment versus grassroots debate is often, not always to be sure, but often off target because the two are interdependent. If good policy is not emanating from the true believers, the establishment becomes a salesman without a product. Likewise, if the political class is rejecting the good ideas of the true blue, they lose the support and energy required to push the party into the majority of both thought and power. This may appear to be simple logic, but try telling that to the millions of grassroots conservatives disgusted with what they view as one cave-in after another by the party leadership, or a GOP establishment that believes it's been forced to swallow too many not ready for prime time insurgents that cost them eminently winnable seats. The grassroots will trumpet the likes of Senator Rand Paul and Ron Johnson, both elected to the Senate in 2010 with no prior political experience to demonstrate the virtue of nominating ideologically sound candidates. And the establishment will answer back with grassroots favorites Richard Murdoch and Todd Aiken both disastrous candidates in 2012. Here's the truth. Political parties are designed for one purpose, winning elections. To some, this may be good, to others, bad. But either way, it's an immutable truth. Policy is just a vehicle for the party to win elections and is thus essentially incidental to the party's pursuit of power. If party leaders believe a given policy will create a more favorable electoral climate, they'll embrace that policy. If not, they won't. This has always been the reality of politics. So the challenge for the grassroots is actually not to convince the establishment of the virtues of any particular policy, but rather its likely popularity, for that is the currency of pure politics. In the end, if we simply define the battle lines of cause versus party as those on the outside versus those on the inside, count me out. They're good and bad of both. But we could drill a bit deeper and define the pejorative word establishment more precisely as those who seek power for its own sake as an end rather than a means as revealed by an inconsistent or incoherent political philosophy. In that case, I for one am down with the cause.